Hello, good morning and welcome to St. Mary's Parish Church, Frinton-on-Sea, for our morning service online. Here is an opening prayer for us. Lord Jesus Christ, you are the bread of life. Let us feast on you and find nourishment for our souls. You are the light of the world. Let us follow you out of the darkness. You are the door. Let us enter the Father's presence in your name. You are the good shepherd. Let us rest in your provision. You are the resurrection and the life. Let us find true life and victory in you. You are the way, the truth and the life. Let us love you with all our heart, soul, mind and strength. We pray this in the precious name of Jesus, our Saviour. Amen. Do Good Anyway by Kent M. Keith People are illogical, unreasonable and self-centred. Love them anyway. If you do good, people will accuse you of selfish ulterior motives. Do Good Anyway if you are successful, you will win false friends and true enemies. Succeed anyway. The good you do today will be forgotten tomorrow. Do good anyway. Honesty and frankness make you vulnerable. Be honest and frank anyway. People favour underdogs but follow only top dogs. Fight for a few underdogs anyway. What you spend years building may be destroyed overnight. Build anyway. People really need help, but may attack you if you do help them. Help people anyway. Give the world the best you have and you'll get kicked in the teeth. Give the world the best you have anyway. Today is Father's Day, so I've chosen to read a passage to you that gives us um, the evidence to us that God is our Father. The passage comes from the book of Hebrews and chapter 12, and I'm begin beginning to read at verse 4. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding blood. And have you forgotten that word of encouragement that addresses you as sons? 
My son, do not make light of the Lord's discipline and do not lose heart when he rebukes you because the Lord disciplines those he loves and he punishes everyone he accepts as a son. Endure hardship as discipline. God is treating you as sons. For what son is not disciplined by his father? If you are not disciplined, and everyone undergoes discipline, then you are illegitimate children and not true sons. Moreover, we have all had human fathers who disciplined us and we respected them for it. How much more should we submit to the father of our spirits and live? Our fathers disciplined us for a while as they thought best, but God disciplines us for our good, that we may share in his holiness. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. One of the things I am very, very grateful for is uh, a happy childhood and good parents. I'm always grateful that God set me in a loving family. I knew that I was loved, I knew that I was cared for, and I knew that I was kept safe. Now I'm very much aware that that's not the reality for everyone. Looking back, there can be very painful and hurt experiences. Between them, my parents fulfilled the five biblical demands of a father. The first one is spiritual leadership. Now that was really fulfilled more by my mother than my dad, because in my younger years, dad was not a Christian. The teaching of life skills, the discipline when it's needed, providing material needs, and lastly, defending the child's rights. And I must admit that becoming a father myself, and funny enough, uh, today is a double celebration for us because today is my son Ian's birthday as well as being Father's Day today. But becoming a father helped me to understand much more about my Heavenly Father and how he cares for me. As a child, my parents had a way of disciplining me without using physical punishment. Although I can remember very vividly one occasion when I said to Dad he wouldn't dare smack me. Boy, I was across his knee quicker than I've ever moved before and the inevitable happened. When it was over with, Dad said, that hurt me far more than it hurt you, Graham. I don't think so, <laughs> is what I thought. But then when I was a father, I realised what my own dad meant. And I realised more <clears throat> about the heart of my heavenly father. In Hebrews 12, we are reminded of what Christ went through, that we might know God as a caring father, a good father. Further seeing that, how can we learn from the way that God cares for us? I needed correction at times as a child. My children also needed correction, and as a Christian, we all need correcting, discipline. We are asked to remember three things in this passage that I've read to you. The first, remember God's word. And the second, 
is remember God's care. And then lastly, remember God's purpose. First of all, remember God's word. Have you completely forgotten this word of encouragement, says the writer. He again quotes from the Old Testament, Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 11. My son, do not despise the Lord's discipline and do not resent his rebuke, because the Lord disciplines those he loves as a father, the son he delights in. That really reminds us that not all who hear, or for that matter read, God's word give their full attention to it. We can easily forget what God has said. Well, a bit more than that, there are various reactions to the word of God. Would you agree? The first is this. We are indifferent to it. We can sometimes make light of the Lord's discipline. I think that we learn more through life's trials and difficult times, the dark times, the hardships, than we do when life goes really well and we feel utterly blessed. We can be indifferent to it. We make light of it. Another reaction to the way in which God's word comes to us and his disciplining comes to us is that we are overwhelmed by it. And so the writer says, do not lose heart. Weighed down, we become despondent and feel that God has forsaken us. But the writer says, rather, be encouraged the lord disciplines the ones he loves the lord's corrective ministry proves that we are children of god rather than despair we ought to rejoice that's the first thing remember god's word secondly Remember God's care. The father treasures his children. I've always felt it an immense privilege to have been the pastor of a church for many years. But I did say even to my congregation on a couple of occasions, I feel the greatest thing that God gave me was a family and to be a father of children. As a father, I've always wanted and still do the very best for my children. And I am concerned with who they are more than what they do, what they become. As God is our father, we undergo discipline and trials of various kinds, all of this shapes who we become. Now I've known several children in the past with whom I would have liked to have laid on hands that biblical practice. Do you know what I mean? To give them a clip round the ear. But I've never done it. The reason? Well they're not my children. If I am responsible for them in some way, just at some moment in time, then I'll say something, but I wouldn't do what I might with my own children, because they're not my children. Our four children are all grown up now. Indeed, two of them have their own children, and it's great being a granddad. But our love and concern is the same for those four children as when they were little ones themselves. The love is there. 
Therefore, the responsibility is there. There's a, a lovely example of this in the book of Job. In the first chapter of the book of Job, in verses 4 and 5, we read this. Talking about Job, we read, His sons used to hold feasts in their homes on their birthdays, and they would invite their three sisters to eat and drink with them. When a period of feasting had run its course, Job would make arrangements for them to be purified. Early in the morning, he would sacrifice a burnt offering for each of them, thinking, perhaps my children have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. This was Job's regular custom, we read. Doesn't that show us how even though our children grow up and are adults themselves and indeed are responsible for themselves, our love for them is there and our wanting to care for them, discipline where appropriate, comment where appropriate, but basically try to ensure that their relationship with God continues. Our Heavenly Father, the writer in Hebrews regards as the Father of spirits, far surpasses the very best of human fathers. He cares and he will do whatever is necessary for our good. Fathers disciplined as they thought best and sometimes make mistakes, but God does it for our good. So that's the second of our thoughts. Remember God's care. Finally, remember God's purpose. Earthly fathers discipline us and their discipline is motivated by sometimes changing moods. However, God's purpose is always for our good and that we may share in his holiness. Yes, I look back at times as a father and think I was a bit too hard. Maybe I should have stepped in quicker sometimes. I wasn't a perfect father and I'm not a perfect father by any means, but God is. And as we think about this whole thing of, of our uh, feeling at times that the Lord is disciplining us, there is first of all an immediate benefit. Looking back over the years of my Christian ministry and even more years of Christian living, my testimony is that God has become more real during times of adversity. In those times, I've learned to hold more firmly to Jesus, who's walked this way before me. During times of adversity, I have been more sensitive to the prompting of the Holy Spirit and the strength he supplies, and therefore drawn closer to God and shared more of his holiness. There's an immediate benefit of being a child of God and experiencing his discipline. Next, there is an ultimate outcome, says the writer. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness. Harvests never appear immediately. They take time. We've planted out in, in the garden some uh, tomatoes, some cabbages, some uh, spring onions, all kinds of different things. And it, it, it's fascinating watching them grow. The, the tomatoes are not doing too well at the moment. The strawberries, 
Oh, they're looking great. They're coming on well. There is an outcome, but it takes time. It's an ultimate outcome. Then next, there is a permanent effect. This fruit, this harvest of righteousness is for those who have been trained by it. Now, can you just notice that there is a, a, a little change of metaphor here? He, he's been talking really about uh, sort of farming and, and uh, harvesting, whereas now those who have been trained by it, he's slipping into a, a kind of athletic mind. And the, the thing about athletes is that there must be constant practice and effort and commitment to bring about any lasting ability. So he says, don't be discouraged and give up. If you feel that the Lord is disciplining you at the moment, he's doing it because he loves you. And there will be an immediate effect. There will be an ultimate outcome. There'll be things that you will learn because of what God is doing in your life right now. It's a bit like riding a bike. Apparently, you never forget. And there have been times when I haven't been on a bike for years and you get on it and you're just straight off. Learning to swim. You never forget. It's there. Driving a car. It's there. You know these things. So just remember that God is your father. And if he is disciplining you, it's because he loves you. Remember God's word. Remember God's care. And remember God's purpose. Commit yourself to your heavenly father and be grateful. You are his child. Amen. Almighty God, we pray to you for mercy. Lord, we so often do what we should not, and not do what we should. Please forgive us our sins, as we come to you now in repentance. We pray for renewal, a regeneration anew in our hearts, through your Holy Spirit, that we may lead lives that reflect your unquenchable love for us. Heavenly Father, creator of all things, we thank you for your abundant blessings upon us. Open our eyes and our hearts to you, that we may live each day you provide for you and your glory. Help us to remember that every day given to us is a gift from you. Help us to glorify you in all we do each and every day. We ask these things in the name of our Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus, we pray for all those who have and continue to suffer during the ongoing pandemic and associated restrictions. Those who, as a result, are alone, forgotten and lost. Those who suffer through mental health and estrangement of family and who remain so often overlooked and unknown to others. Strengthen us in the truth of your love as we now look forward to a lifting of the crippling measures that have brought much pain, misery and anguish to so many of us. Please, Lord, therefore help us to shake the dust of the past from our feet and to live this and every day for you, one day at a time, neither looking behind us, for the past is gone and has no hold over us, and not to the future, for that is not promised, but for now, this instant, in service of you, Father, to that end, may your will be done in all things, in the name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. And now the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. 
Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And so to our blessing for today. Go forth in the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honour everyone. Love and serve the Lord rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain you always, forevermore. Amen. Take care, everybody. Stay safe, and we'll see you soon. Yeah.